Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, glad to see you this morning. And for some of you, you'll be uh, hitting the replay. Uh, this uh, video, we will have finished hours before you see it. So good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. And we really do want to share with you some things that stir you up and maybe even bring some uh, explanation to some questions you may have formulated in your mind on why is it not working or what is God asking of me or how come uh, I used to do this and God would do that but now I do those same things it doesn't seem like God is answering the prayers that I'm saying that he answered before why is what's wrong is there anything wrong with the way that I'm praying is there anything wrong with me? The answer to all of that is no. There's nothing wrong with you. So when we run into a place, especially in the faith ministry, we run into a place where uh, we see some things accomplished because we pray a certain way. We, uh, we use and stand on and emphasize certain scriptures to people that we're praying for or a situation that we're praying for. And we get the desired results that we intended to have. And we go along and we're, and we're joyful and we, and we feel as though we have arrived, we have hit it. And we're really confident that if someone were to ask us to pray about a situation, uh, pray about a particular physical ailment or malady, we would be the ones that will take our faith and join it to their faith and they will get the desired result. We know it's true because we've seen it work. We, we've seen it within our eyes. We've experienced it. But now, for some reason, things are not working as quickly as they, they used to work. It, it seems like the heavens have shut their ears to our prayers and our concern and our praise. Why is there a delay? So we begin to grapple with these questions and look for answers every place, including old adages and old sayings that saints had before that we walked away from and say, oh, those things are not real. God answers prayer and God answers prayer now. A long time ago, we may have heard someone say, well, God sometimes wants you to wait. He won't answer a prayer just because, amen, you are standing on a particular scripture. He answers it for his name's sake. He'll do it because he wants to do it. He may be training somebody and teaching them something. There may not be time for their healing. Um, there may be sin in their lives. There may be something going on that you don't know anything about. And you have all these explanations on why prayers are not answered. And sometimes it'll weaken your faith. Sometimes these challenges and lack of answered prayer will be with, may put you in some type of bewilderment. And you don't know what to do. What do I say? How do we go forward now? Um, and those things and those questions are hard to answer. And there's all kinds of um, uh, prophets and philosophies and theories out there for you to listen to. Um, and I'm just going to add my part into this as well. One of the things that I am stuck on is certain things that I believe that come from the Word of God or the Bible, and they rang true in my spirit. They rang true in my inner person as the actual promise, will, mind of God. And one of the things that that uh, one of the many things that uh, stand out for me is the fact that how we overcome the world. And Jesus tells us that he, be of good cheer, for He has overcome the world, and and uh, it's by faith that He has overcome the world. And the faith that he's authored and finished and given to us will cause us to be world overcomers as well. So it's by faith that we overcome the world. Then he also instructs us and teaches us that God is our father. He's not just God. He's fathering us. 
He's preparing us. He's teaching us how to reign with him, how to create as he creates. He's teaching us. And it's time for us to learn something. Now, like children, there are certain stages of a child's life, especially at infancy, that the parent does everything for the child. I mean, everything for the child. Feeds the child, changes the child, dresses the child, uh, protects the child, provides for the child, whatever that child needs, that parent provides that for the child. And when we first started walking in the revelation that God is our father, we're infants in our understanding, and, and he does everything for us. And because he's father, and that's that's important, he's fathering us, he's training us. And, and I like to put it this way, he's training us to work in the business, to run the business of Godship, <laughs> if I can loosely use that term, with him. All of us is in training, and these bodies are given to us. And, they, and because these bodies are formed, there's a limitation in these bodies. These bodies can only do certain, be certain places where God can be the same every place and know all things. While we're in the body, we are limited. We don't, we're not, we're, we're finite. We're not infinite as our Father is, but we are infinite beings outside of these bodies. So we need to learn how to walk by faith of who we really are. And in this form, faith is greater than any form and faith is greater than any limitations that the form will place you under or place on you. For greater is he that's in you because of who you are, what you are, where you come from, the law of life that's in you. Now you're housed in a body and in the body there is another law that's called the law of death. And that law of death has limitations to it. It's born, it lives, it progresses, and then eventually it fades away. But you will never die because you are not a body. And there's a law of life that's within you. And outside the body, you're formless. You're not limited. You're infinite as your father's infinite. Uh, as your father's infinite, infinite, so are you. So what we're learning in these bodies is how to reign with him while in form, while in the body. How do we reign how is his will being done in on earth where we are as it is in heaven where he is everything everywhere and all that is how do we formulate that how do we exercise that through faith all right and 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 through the power that is in us today uh, we are uh, today we are looking at some things and and one of the things that we're looking at uh, today, let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> it's a definition, and and uh, and what I'm saying in the title today, and this is part one because we're going to do this later on this afternoon. But <clears throat> excuse me, the title today is uh, "Health and Healing is Psychosomatic." Health and healing, they are psychosomatic. And, and what I mean about this is it gives the first two definitions of what psychosomatic is. It says, of relating to, concern with, or involving both mind and body. The psychosomatic nature of man, that's, uh, that's a Herbert Ratner. Number two, of relating to, to or involving, or concern with bod body, uh, bodily, symptoms caused by mental or emotional disturbance. And that's where we are now. That's what we've been talking about the last past weeks, the last past month, the last year. I've been on this subject uh, for a while under different titles, but we've been following the same train of thought leading us out of what I call human darkness into the, the, the divine light or enlightening, enlightenment. So we have to have the mind that was in Christ. We have to have that mind in us that was in Christ Jesus. Okay, the same mind that's in Christ has to be inside of us. So when we have illness and we have symptoms and sensations in the body, we are aware of those sensations. We are aware of those symptoms that that are that's in the body. And so we're said the truth. The truth strengthens the organs of the body. The, strength, the, the truth strengthens the mind and mental uh, concept that you have. The, the, the truth strengthens uh, 
your physical muscles, your physical being. Truth will strengthen and not weaken you. Truth releases energy. Truth uh, 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 excels and magnifies and extends life. So the truth, the scripture tells us, will make us free. And the closer we get to the truth, the freer we are from symptoms and contradictions and hardships. And the fact that contradictions and hardships and sickness exist in our lives is an indication that we are not as close to the truth as we should be at this time of our life. We should be at this time of the life, along the path of life we're walking, closer to the truth, not further from the truth than we were. We should be progressing closer and closer and closer to the truth. As we progress closer and closer and closer to the truth, we are see that the experiences that I, we have will actually begin to magnify and mirror the blessings of God in our individual lives to the point that we are literally lights in the world that will draw people to us. Our life will become a light in any situation. Our thought will become light. And the fact that we are delivered, that's light. And free, that's light. So all that we're doing is shining away trouble, shining away darkness. And there is no enemy or opposite to the light that we are projecting to all men to the light that covers us, to the anointing that strengthens us, encases us. There's no objection to it. But there's some things we have to settle in our minds as we are progressing closer and closer and further and further from darkness, further from darkness, and we're proceeding toward truth. There's a certain mental okay, position that each and every one of us should have, and that is the mind of Christ. So we started off with saying some things that you should realize. This is the truth. You are an infinite being. You're not a finite being. You're an infinite being in a finite body. Your body is not infinite, but you're not a body. You're a being that's in a body. You're housed in a body. Now, you're going to be in this body for, for a, a short period of time. Uh, and I say a short period of time when I compare it to your eternal life. So this is a very short period of time that you be in this finite body that, that has a for sale date. When I say this body has a for sale date, there's a date coming that you're going to lay this body down and you're going to continue living. You're going to continue on in life. Now, because you're an infinite being, the law of life, I want you to hear this, is working in you. The reason that you're an infinite being is because there is a law that's working in your beingness which is the law of life. The law of life, the scriptures will tell you, all right, the law of life puts the knot, the law of sin and death. So this law of life is greater than the law of sin and death that you're housed in. And one of the things that we use as an example is gravity. We use gravity, that's a law on the earth. Gravity is a law that works all the time. But when you work the law of lift and flight, you will lift and you will fly and, and you will nullify the pull of gravity that will pull that object to the ground. But it's working the law that causes a lot to lift up and to soar and to fly. And as long as those laws are working, gravity, it, even though it's in existence, is nullified. It can't pull that object down to the, girth, to the earth. But as soon as you stop using those laws, then the law of gravity comes alive and pulls that object down to the ground and that object will crash. And if there are people on it, such as a plane, then people may or may not lose their lives. So it could be a deadly thing. That which is meant for good, if it's, if it's abused, will also bring about death, destruction, and hardship. So you got to realize that this law that's in you that help guide you toward the truth, if you misuse it and abuse it, it can hurt you. If you use it wisely, it can help you. So there's an attitude that you have to have toward the laws, the law of life and the law of death. You have to have a certain mindset. You have to have the mind of Christ that as long as I'm working the law of life, I'm proceeding toward truth. And the closer I get to truth, the freer I am from the law of death and anything that 
is a part of it, and anything that is a construct of death. I'm, 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 I'm moving away from it, so it has less and less hold in my life. Amen. So that's what we're talking about. Now, we have walked in faith long enough where we've depended on God to do everything for us. Now we have to go to, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe it is, and where it says we are laborers or co-laborers with God. We have to grow up to become co-laborers with God. We have the mind of Christ, all right? And we have the logic of Christ that's working in us. We, are, uh, we, are, we receive his love, all right? And we're abiding in that love and we, we are grounded in that love and we're sharing that love. And that's where, that's our beginnings. That's where we started from. That we're starting from love. We have the mind of Christ. And then we're co-laboring with God. And we walk in the love of God. And we know that God has nothing that will hurt or harm us. God is not trying to punish us. He don't train us through hardships. Now, another thing that we have to realize that God is not causing us to wait. If there's a promise, a promise that God has made us, the promises of God are yes and amen. So be it. There's no promise of God that he has given you that's not already for you when you need it. The Bible says when we, are, we come into that place of need, come boldly to the throne of grace. When you're in a place of need, come boldly to, to, uh, to the throne of grace so you may receive those need or that need met, whatever that need is. And it's now because faith is is now faith is not in the hope is in the future but faith is now says now faith is then when we walk by faith and not by our senses we are not judging whether we are healed or delivered by looking at our senses or our body condition or time we our minds transcend time see time is a measurement tool it's a measurement uh Way that is a tool that you use for measurement, all right? Years, days, months, seconds. This, these are uh, tools for measurement. You're not measuring out anything. You're accepting. So when we come to God, we come expecting and we come accepting, okay? And then some things else that God says that you are. One of the things that God says about you is that you have inherited his name. And one of the names of God, your heavenly father, is I am. So when you thank God, when you have a need and you, and you thank God for meeting that need, because our Heavenly Father has met all our need according to his riches and glory. He has done this. Done means I don't have to wait for it. I just need to, ex to receive it and expect and receive. Expect and receive. I expect all my need is met and I receive it by faith, not by my body. My body and time and people and doctors cannot tell me whether I have received anything from my father. My father says he's already given it to me. I have received all things in and through Christ Jesus. Amen. And he placed me in Christ Jesus where all the answers are yes and amen. That's where I abide. I abide in his love. In his love, all things is yea and amen. Now, but a lot of our healing, okay, is what I just said. It's psychosomatic. It has to do with your mental and emotional state on what's going to happen in your physical manifestation. You've already got it. God is not withholding any good thing from you. In fact, it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. So Jesus, when they were asked him, they said, well, when is the kingdom coming? Is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom? When is this going to come? And he tells us, some people are going to say, uh, it's coming out of the clouds, it's coming from the sea. Don't worry about it. The kingdom is already in you. It does not come with observation. The kingdom of God is already in you, which means the law of life is already in you, which means the power of God is already in you. Now we need to teach ourselves how to release what's in us out so that we will have experience of those things in our natural lives. Those things will swallow up those other things that's trying to kill, destroy, and frustrate us and bring us in an area of hardship. 
It's not God that any suffer. It's not God that any perish. So that any includes you. How do we do that? And it has to do now with growing up and, and changing our mental construct, understanding the makeup and the principles that make us up as people and as individuals. There are things about us that, that we cannot ignore anymore. We are, yes, we are spirits, and, but those are some, there's the, some components about us that needs to be healed. We have, and, 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 what, and what is the relationship that we have with our spirit and our body, okay? What is the relationship of, of our spirit and our body and our minds, our souls? What is the relationship that they, you know, how do they relate to one another? How do we relate? How do we function? And how do we master those things that make us ill? Now let's look at this again. Now if you look at verse two, psychosomatic has to do with relating to involving our concern with bodily symptoms caused by mental or emotional disturbance. We're gonna to have to deal with this. A lot of bodily symptoms are caused by mental or emotional disturbance. And that's why you're having these bodily symptoms that turn into disease. So we deal with the cause and we will eliminate the effect, okay? See, we, you've been trying to treat the effect. You're trying to treat the effect, all right? But you're not dealing with the cause. And that's why you keep taking medicine. You keep uh, uh, having to uh, go to hospitals. You keep having to have some type of therapy because you're dealing with the effect without getting to the cause of what's causing that effect in your life. And we're, try we're working on uh, showing you and helping you discover cause, all right? So we can discover the cause. So uh, last week we dealt with this. We dealt with um, um, the, your conscious. Now we, what, we was, what we did was your body, okay, is having sensations, but it's your mind that will tell your body and give a name to what those sensations are. So what's in your mind will make you identify something that's in your body. But there's, there's another element because we, we said it kind of cute, you know, your arm can't to discover its armness, and or your leg can't talk about its legness, and you know I was just we were being cute with that, and your mind can't talk about its mindness. It takes an entity greater than the mind, which is conscious. So your mind, your conscious, and then what's greater than your conscious is your awareness. Okay, so we were saying, and we were, and we've been teaching that we have to deal with our conscious and the filters that our conscious. Uh, are living through, are, are expressing itself through, which shades and filters the mind that shades and filters the body. So if we fix the consciousness, then we'll, we'll fix the mind that will fix the body. And we use, ex we use examples. We use the example of hypnotism. You know, if you're hypnotized, you put the conscious, okay, to sleep under hypnosis, and you give the mind a suggestion. And when you give the mind a suggestion, that suggestion finds fruit and expression through the body. So you, and we talked about a hypnotist saying to a subject that when I count to 10, you will lose your hearing. You won't be able to hear. But when I count back from 10 to 1, your hearing will be restored. And when you awake, you won't remember any of these instructions. And so they, they, so they, they give this the suggestion of amnesia. They won't remember the instructions, but it's also they're going to behave. So the audience is watching. And so when they, they come out of this, they count to 10. And as they count to 10, the person loses their ability to hear. They do all kinds of things behind them, making noise, clapping hands, clinging cymbals, and there's no response because he can't hear. And then when the hypnotist began to count back from 10 to 1, as he gets to 1, the person's hearing is restored. Then, and, and, and then all of a sudden they can hear, but it's all the suggestion of the mind, okay? The mind is has been, been um, 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 put under because uh, consciousness, that's the word I'm looking at, has been, has been taken away. 
the, the mind is open to, to, to suggestions. The same thing comes with, to, with operating. Someone operates you, they put you under anesthesia. They put you under an, anesthesia that you become unconscious. Because you're unconscious, your mind is not alarming your body to any type of attack, any type of cutting. So you sit there and you operate it on because you are unconscious. They sew you up, they do whatever everything is, and they slowly bring you back to consciousness when you become aware of something has happened to your body. You begin to, the body begins to feel some type of sensation, it will feel some type of pain where you've been cut on, sewed on, whatever. You begin to feel something because you are now conscious. So your conscious net mind is asleep and you don't feel nothing. But when you are awakened, your conscious is awakened, you feel everything. Well, the same thing is true with life, period. You have a subconscious. Your subconscious has been programmed to believe and to think a certain way. And because you're in time and you believe in a certain way, and you may have caught the suggestion from an authority figure when you was a child, but it was put in your conscious that became your subconscious. You may have heard uh, as a child that that um, your family uh, it, it's a family uh, inheritance that all the family, any, I mean everybody that's part of your particular family, has to um, is um, allergic. They have hay fever. You know they're allergic to certain things. You hear that as a child. Now as a child you're not allergic to anything. But as a child, you heard that, so you grow in thinking that my family is allergic to this, my family is allergic to that. Uh, we have hay fever. At a certain uh, time of year, uh, hay fever comes, and we have all these allergies and so forth and so on. And you grow into that because it's in your subconscious, because that's what you heard. And so you have to uproot those kind of things by telling yourself the truth. You, and how you start this, even though you may have hay fever, even though you may have been diagnosed as having a heart problem, even though you've been diagnosed as having diabetes, even though you've been diagnosed as having high blood pressure, and you're taking medication, you keep on taking medication, but what you started doing is, you started deprogramming yourself by telling yourself the truth. And you gotta be steadfast on this. You gotta be steadfast and immovable, and you gotta receive it now. You got to have an expectation to receive and an acceptance. I expect and I accept my deliverance. I, ex I, I let this go and I accept total healing for whatever I'm standing for healing for. I accept the finances that come in my life. I'm not demanding anything. I'm not greater than God. But I accept all the blessings and all the promises of God because all of God's promises to me are yea and amen. Again, all of God's promises to me are yea and amen. So you begin there and you say, when that symptom comes, when you have to take that pill for the diabetes, when you have to take that pill for the high blood pressure, you just say, look, I'm not subject to this. I'm not, I am delivered from this. I cancel this out. I used to believe in this. I don't believe in this no more. I don't believe in this. I am an infinite being. And I'm only subject to that which I hold in my mind. And in my mind, I am healed. In my mind, I am whole. In my mind, I am one with God. In my mind, the law of life has set me free from the law of sin and death that dwells in my body. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The law of life uh, 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 negates the law of sin and death. The law of life negates death that's trying to operate my body, preserves my life. I'm preserved by the law of life so that I can do what God has put me on this earth to do, unhindered and unhampered and unhampered. And unhampered is the word that I'm looking for. Now watch this. Your symptoms, your physical symptoms may not leave right away. You may still have to take your medicine, but now that you're making this confession of faith, the medicine that you on will work more effectively effectively and soon just stick with it soon maybe a month maybe a week maybe a year but soon you're going to be off the medication you're going to not have any symptoms you're going to be the miraculous because you would have created a miracle for yourself by standing on truth and the more you stand on truth the more you release 
from any lie and contradiction that's trying to become your reality. Any real, any kind of illusion that's trying to make itself real begins to fade and fade and fade away. But you got to be steadfast and immovable and hold to your confession. You got to hold to it. You just say it every day. You say it every time you take a pill. You say it when you walk. Every time a sensation comes, let's say there's some pain in an area. Don't even name it. Don't give it no name. Don't give it no dignity. Say, I don't, that symptom is not me. I cancel that symptom. I am an infinite being, and I am not subject to that. I'm only subject to that which I hold in my mind. I am an infinite being, and the law of life in me is at work, putting to naught the law and sin of sin and death that's in my body. I am preserved by the law of life. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And just make, that's your spiritual confession. And you will call those things that be not as though they are and they will become your reality. That's your faith, not your feelings, not your emotion, but your faith overcomes the world. Not that you're not going to have the world object to your faith, but the world's objection is not greater than your canceling. You cancel that objection out. You cancel that symptom out. You are the child of God, and you have authority to resist anything that does not give your father glory. And sickness, disease, and lack does not give glory to you or your father. You're from glory as he is so are you now you're training yourself to do the work that jesus did physician heal thyself and that's exactly what you're doing and when you learn that power for yourself then you're going to love your neighbor as yourself and what you've done for yourself you'll be able to do for others because you know how the law of life works and all of life will recognize you as the master and obey what words proceed out of your mouth because you mastered this and with authority and with certainty when you re, uh, rebuke or cancel out any symptom it will listen to you quickly and quickly quicker and quicker and quicker until it's instantaneous it'll happen with your shadow falling on people that's how anointing this uh, generation is growing into that kind of anointing. That kind of power is ready to manifest itself through the sons of God. But we have to hold our confession, hold strong to our confession, hold strong to our identity. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Praise God. Praise God. I, I passed time. Uh, we didn't get to make the other references that I think. But we're going to have part two when we have church today. So don't uh, j just tune in now. You're watching us today. And later on, we'll put up a video later on in the afternoon. And, and that'll be part two of this. And follow along. Follow closely of how this works in Jesus' name. But by you being a part of our video church, our digital church, you're a member of the church. Amen. So we need for you to help us with your finances. We're going to bring you the word. We're going to teach you and show you how to win in this life. But I need your partnership. I need you to participate with an offering or a tithe or a gift of love. And you can do that by going to www.nccfc.net. Or you can mail something to us. And our mailing address is 2851 West 120th Street, Suite E as in Edward, 522 Hawthorne, California, 90250. I also encourage you to write us, write, ask us questions, or give your testimony uh, to us and send it to that same address that you're sending your tithes and offerings to. Then you can zell us at sisterweek at yahoo.com. Now, this is tax season. For everyone that gave last year, faithfully, we've already given your tax returns so you can file them uh, 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 well, with your uh, accountant and they can give you your credits for giving to a nonprofit. So you want to give, you want to give as God is instructed in your heart to give and you will get benefit from giving to a nonprofit. But there's a spiritual benefit in giving it as well. But the doors are the opportunities that open up to you and there's blessings poured into your life from all directions that you didn't even expect. 
as you give, you find out it's that same heart, that same readiness to give, then there's a readiness to replenish you through the world. There's all kinds of avenues and ways that God replenishes you because you are a giver and a cheerful giver at that. Uh, now, you're watching me on YouTube. Now, those of you watching me on YouTube, uh, uh, later on today, we'll place this on uh, Twitter and we'll place this on Facebook. And you, when you see it and you want to come and hear the rest of the message and those who are looking up at us on YouTube uh, this morning, um, uh, my handle is Will We 3 We want you who's watching us to like the video, like the video. As many of you that's watching, we want you to like the video. And if you haven't done so, we want you to ring the bell and become a subscriber to our channel. Amen. We want that list to get up to 500. We 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 hit up. We we're growing and growing, and we didn't pause. But if you are watching and you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please hit the bell and become a subscriber. Today we're going to meet um, uh, at this address, 315 South Market Street. It's temporary until we find our own home again. Uh, we're in Inglewood, California, 90301, uh, and we will be meeting at 9 a.m. We would love to see you there. Come out and be a part of what God is doing. So thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you today and every single day. And remember, God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. Shalom. See you next time.